Ladies and gentlemen, uh, that was, of course, a, a, a wonderful speech from the Honourable Member for Yorkshire. But <laughs> it was entirely beside the point. She knows that the motion, uh, she knows that Holocaust denial, uh, the idea it should be outlawed, is indefensible. So she didn't talk about Holocaust denial being outlawed at all. She talked about hate speech and anti-Semitism. This motion is this House believes Holocaust denial should not be criminalised in the 21st century, specifically Holocaust denial. So let's try and bear that in mind in the rest of the debate and not uh, go sideways onto other issues. Now, uh, let me give you a few reasons why I believe it's wrong for Holocaust denial to be, specifically to be, uh, uh, outlawed. First of all, of course, it is outlawed, as we've already heard, in a number of countries. But that's not the end of the story. In a number of countries, the law against Holocaust denial extends to the denial of atrocities perpetrated by communist regimes as well. That includes the Czech Republic and Hungary. In Hungary, the word Holocaust indeed was dropped in 2010 from a law uh, criminalizing the denial of national socialist and communist crimes uh, against humanity. Uh, the growing European tendency driven by Eastern European countries to equate communist atrocities with Nazi genocide uh, is one consequence of the idea of criminalization. It's already led to attempts in Ukraine and France to outlaw the denial of both. In, in Ukraine, there have been serious attempts to outlaw the denial uh, that the, the idea that the uh, famine of the early 1930s was not a genocide perpetrated by the, uh, by the Soviets. Uh, the French historian Olivier Petre Grenouillot was accused in 2005 of denial of a crime against humanity for saying in an interview that the slave trade was not a genocide since it didn't have the goal of exterminating her people. Now, uh, the Honourable Member for Yorkshire uh, mentioned the slave trade. Was he suggesting indeed that he should outlaw denial of the slave trade? I'm not sure that's the case. Do we really want to outlaw statements like this? Why should Holocaust denial be different? Clearly, many people and a number of governments don't think it should be. If the denial of a key historical tragedy of one people uh, is criminalised, why not others? So when you outlaw Holocaust denial, you open the door to much wider censorship of historical writing and opinion. Do we really want uh, governments to legislate on what we can and cannot say about the past? There are also many subtle and differentiated methods and degrees of denial. A few years ago, the former Front National leader, Jean-Marie Le Pen, declared Auschwitz is a mere detail in the history of the Second World War. Shocking statement, but is it Holocaust denial? Uh, hard to tell, especially if you have a law against it. A number of countries <coughs> try to cope with the variety and uh, gradations of such statements by criminalizing people who uh, trivialize the Holocaust, as in Hungary downplay it, as in Germany, diminish its proportions, as in Israel. Where do you draw the line? When someone says five or four million Jews were killed, but not six million, many American museums and institutions put the number of those killed in the Holocaust at 11 million because they want to include other victims of Nazism. Does saying it was six million amount to Holocaust denial? Surely it's right for historians to carry on debating uh, issues such as these. I would really want politicians to say uh, what we can and can't uh, argue about. There's a 2000, rep uh, year 2000 report of the Institute for Jewish Policy Research in the UK. Notes, legislating about historical truth is tantamount to admitting that a free society, the discipline of history, cannot look after itself. That the immense body of historical scholarship on the Holocaust does not constitute by its very existence the ans answer to uh, the uh, 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 the Holocaust deniers. And here I would uh, disagree, in fact, with the first speaker on my side. Uh, I do not think uh, that uh, the fact that, unfortunately, the generation of those who went through the Holocaust and survived it dying out is actually going to open the door further to Holocaust deniers. I think that what we showed in the Irving uh, trial, which my uh, co-speaker is going to say more about, I, uh, I hope, uh, that is that historians can actually be trusted to find out uh, the truth about the past and to reach reasonable conclusions about it. I spent three years uh, researching, writing, defending my report, the High Court on David Irving's work on the Second World War. Uh, I showed uh, to the court satisfaction that Irving denied the existence of gas chambers as instruments of mass murder, denied that Hitler ordered the killing of the Jews, denied that more than a few score thousand were killed anyway. He was discredited by arguing by evidence since the trial, uh, astonishingly 16 years ago now, 
Uh, he has not had access to the national press. His books have not been sold in bookshops. He has been uh, shunned by reputable publishers. He has to publish all himself. He exists only in cyberspace. So I think it was a real achievement of historical research and, and, and argument discrediting him. Supposing instead of trying to silence Professor Lipstadt in a civil action, he'd been put on trial for Holocaust denial. This evidence would not have been made available. Nobody would have learned anything, at least of all the defendant. Crucially, defendants in such trials can present themselves as martyrs for freedom of speech. Outlawing Holocaust denial would enable defendants to use legal privilege to spout their obnoxious views from the dock without fear of the kind of detailed refutation we were able to supply in the civil action brought by Mr. Irving. Holocaust denial trials would be show trials that give the deniers the oxygen of publicity they crave. Just think of uh, Hitler's trial in 1924, where he gave a long speech justifying his actions in the Beer Hall Putsch. Or in another context altogether, Fidel Castro's uh, history will absolve me when he was put on trial, one of his characteristically five or six hour speeches, but from, from the dock. That's what would happen. Mr. Irving brought his action against Professor Lipstadt partly in the belief it would bring him back into the media limelight. When he was in prison for Holocaust denial in Austria, he used the first of his daily phone calls that he was allowed from prison to phone the BBC Today programme to voice his protest. It's understandable that countries like Germany and Austria uh, outlawed Holocaust denial in the immediate aftermath of the war when uh, most, a lot, very large numbers of people still supported Nazism. But we don't need legislation in the 21st century. Uh, it's been mentioned, uh, again, uh, my honourable opponent here, that... Um, uh, Holocaust denial has entered the mainstream, but in fact, it is not. Polls conducted in America show that the uh, proportion of Americans who believe that the Holocaust never happened is far smaller than the proportion who believe that Elvis Presley is still alive. <laughs> Point here is not Holocaust denial specifically that needs banning. It should be confronted by education and argument, not by laws that would lend it the allure of the forbidden and give the small insignificant, marginal groups who espouse it, a degree of public attention, they're desperate and they crave, but don't in any way deserve. It's a larger ideology of, of racism, anti-Semitism that has to be dealt with, and we already have laws uh, against incitement. Uh, in that sense, I think, of course, freedom of speech cannot be unlimited, but that's not what we are arguing. We're simply arguing that it's wrong to criminalize the specific denial of uh, the Holocaust uh, for the reasons that I've argued. We must defend free speech against attempts by politicians to try and legislate against uh, expressions of opinion, statements of fact which they disagree, however wrong these may be. In the end, and it's really crucial to grasp this point, freedom of speech means nothing unless it also includes the freedom to be offensive. You can't demand something that uh, is offensive to you and the many different things to many different people is outlawed uh, simply because you don't like it or you feel offended by it. Holocaust denial is obnoxious, it's offensive to many, but that doesn't mean it should be outlawed. In an age when politicians are increasingly disregarding the need to base policy on evidence, when irrationality is running riot across the internet, we badly need rational dis uh, dis discourse an evidence-based argument will be clearly very damaging to our civil society and our democracy to cut it off. And I beg to support the motion. Thank you.